Well, hello. As just said, I'm a filmmaker. I have been working primarily with the visual, but elements of, this, of sound keep coming in more and more intensely. And I want to actually try and bring in thinking about sound as key to what goes on. So I'm here to tell you about a recent project, which isn't about technology in that quite that same way. Um, it's changed my thinking quite a lot. Um, we're in a time when seeing is not really believing anymore, but maybe listening might be a new place we can start to think some things through. So, listen before you leap, leap before you leap. This is what people think of when they see climate change. You can look it up. This is page one of a Google search, fairly obviously. And we're visually cued into thinking certain things when we see something like this, where immediately thinking climate change is elsewhere. Climate change is in places with great red and white industrial chimneys, which we've not seen in this country for a great many years. Climate change is something that's quite distant from us, or it's global and we can't do anything about it. But what does it sound like? So sound can actually be a way for us to get together and think about what climate change might mean where we are and locally in various ways. So it means it's a process that we're all inside and it's going to be different, different contexts for us all. Um, yeah, so this process takes different places, different ways, and I'd like to help you think about it in North Norfolk. North Norfolk is the edge of Doggerland. You could walk from here to Holland, you could walk from here to Denmark at one time. So this is a place where coastal change is happening all the time. Coastal change isn't new, but the pace and the energy of coastal change is becoming disquieting. And how does that come across to people? So there's soft margins, there are retreating communities, and what's the lived experience? Half the village was out there once, and it still is, if you believe the stories from the people hear the bells out at sea at night. Quite a few stories like that. But when you're working in this kind of place, there are people that say, claim to represent nature, the National Trust and so on, the landowners, there's villagers. How do you actually get some of these voices together? So I want to try and get some voices to contribute to a bigger picture. So this is the start of a project, which I th hopefully if I press this button, the video will start. Or is it the next one? No, it's the next one. This is the local schools that we got involved in sound recording. What are the sounds right now in North Norfolk? So you start with a nature project, nothing too unusual about that, but we actually start to feed the questions back into communities. You get involved with the parents in the communities, you start to talk to people, and from something that starts off through things like International Dawn Chorus Day, the signs of things now, you start to think a bigger picture about the signs of the social, you bring in the archive about the signs how places were. So for example, I've never been in a Rolls Royce going up a street before, I probably never will, but here we are. If you contrast Blakeney to Brancaster, just along the coast, um, for the last few years, nobody who currently lives in Brancaster was born in Brancaster. Not a single soul. Whereas in Blakeney, there are still quite a lot. Local people can't afford to live here, and it's slowly moving along the coast to Sheringham, etc. And at the rate we're going, the countryside is being turned into a theme park. I, I think people are beginning to sort of creak under the strain of that sort of very long visitor season. 
So what's interesting for us in the project, we suddenly got this realisation that you can't separate social change and environmental change. They're both strange creeping processes that work along the coast and have devastating effects. So we began to think that, well, maybe we can't think about climate change apart from social change. So we started calling it coastal change in the project. And this wasn't to demean the science or to diminish the science. It was actually to allow people to come forward with their perspectives. And we'll see in a minute, we've got an extraordinary perspective in this, but in many ways, as well as erosion and as well as salt increasing and, you know, difficulties with fertility, that part of the country is actually experiencing a kind of highland clearances in reverse. People are being stripped from the coast, people are being stripped from the villages where they were born, and they're actually being taken from, they're all being exiled from their own towns by gentrification, by second homes and so on. It's really, really quite serious. So... How did we put the, all these different voices together? Well, we had electronic compositions, which we made into site-specific installations. We had composed works, which we did with the communities in schools and in other local contexts. We got uh, somebody who used to be involved with the Scratch Orchestra, which is one of the great improvised music, music t you know, um, groups in, in, in British history. And we got little things where we got, we got small installations, large installations, community groups, and we started to put all these voices together in various ways. So I was archive recording this idea of a radio ballad where voice and sound and music and experience can come together it became really quite important. So we can expand sound, we can play with it, and taken away from what the, the dominance of the, vi the visual, it gives it, it's, you can have a kind of democracy of sound in a really interesting way. So, and again, the existing soundscape you can't escape from what the land actually is. You know, you're, you're thinking, here you are in this beautiful landscape, but you're actually out there and you're living in the soundscape. You're hearing fast jets going by to the Holcomb bombing ranges. You're hearing the buses. You're hearing the noises of burgers. It's a highly technological landscape, and yet we managed to edit all that out visually. And there's a lot of humour in there as well in what we heard. Here's one of the electronic oh, compositions. Oh, anguish that there have been that the wind farm is ugly and despoils the horizon and it isn't what we like. By the time they've been for 25 years, they will become that horizon, won't they? Yeah. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's some movement to save the wind farm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I really yeah, wouldn't be surprised. at all surprised. No. I was seasick this day, you won't be surprised. So all these different sounds, you could take electronic music, we take the sound of the wind farms, you can hear the sound of the hydrophiles under the water, you can hear people's conversation, you start to create a really dynamic mix of all the possibilities for sound. And in terms of making a film, it was actually very much about slowing down my idea of what an edit should be, and actually giving space and time and the visuals, allowing space and allowing a, a defocusing. Obviously, the fact we're showing it in tiny little 30 second which doesn't really help you get that. You can see the film online after. So, we're able to bring voices together. And what will people say? Instead of research being about, we are the experts, we're coming to your community, then we're off again. What's the expertise in the villages? And there's an extraordinary phrase just coming up, which we heard from some of the, the local fishermen. I'll just, well, they, 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 this, is, this is what will the place sound like in the future. You know, the tiniest sounds we were able to get. I mean, you can actually record the sound of foam on the beach. Extraordinary. So we got some of that in, in the project. This is the sound of a prepared piano that was in the, the, the major improvised concert event where we had local ki school kids, we had adults, we had recorded sound, live event. And some of that sound you'll hear in the, in the, in the next couple of excerpts. And this is a film from the archives. This was made by Billy Bishop, who was the warden of the marshes which means he looks after the ducks for shooting. My father came out with the sentence, you can say what you want about the climate, but I tell you there's more water in the sea. More water in the sea? He said, yeah. And he said, uh, when I was a boy, the tidal range was greater and uh, we didn't get such high targets. Now the, the water's higher up and there's, there's more water in the sea. 
There must be with all this ice melting. There's a particular quality of that 8 mil footage and it's a very contemporary voice, you know, echoing through local experience and how it's feeding into today. And we were really proud and pleased that we were able to get through to people so that we could find what real knowledge is in areas, not what we assume knowledge is. So bring voices together. You don't assume that authority voices are any more valid than anybody else's in this context. And we're not trying to create an artificial agreement through bringing these voices together, but just to actually bring a context where people can be heard. So there's a final video I just want to show you here. And this is one of the, the keys. It brings in poetry as well. There was talk of poetry earlier. And this brings in a little piece from a writer, Kathleen Jamie. Again, from the improvised concert. It's all the senses, isn't it? We, we do spend a lot of time looking at things. But there's all about the smells and, and the sounds and everything else touch as well. So that is part of the appreciation of the area. I'm really struck when I meet this project by something I read by a wonderful nature writer called Kathleen Jamie. Um, she, she's got a book of nature writing called Findings. And in it, there's just this little phrase dropped at the bottom of a page about a third of the way through um, where she uh, she invites us all to extend the web of our noticing. So, to give you a little, I'll give you a little tiny snippet of the intellectual here. Sound operates simultaneously as something materially produced within social and technological relations, and also something interpreted and imagined, especially by social and political elites, but also by those excluded from privilege or subjected to authority. So sound is a really interesting arena when you put it together with the visual in ways that I'm only just beginning to appreciate. If you're interested in any more of this, I urge you to visit the soundingcoastalchange.org website. And since then, the interest in sound has actually led me to work with bell ringers, uh, with contemporary, contemporary music for hand bell ringers. And I'm afraid that's another story, so you'll have to ask me afterwards. Cheers.